trigger warning. Some people may find topics discussed in this episode difficult. Please proceed with caution. If you would like information on cults in the news, please join my substack, frankietees.substack.com. This free show is brought to you by Frankie T's Art. Now you can get themed art on t-shirts. That's right. Check out Frankie T's, T-E-E-S, on our substack. Or just go to Frankie T's, T-E-E-S, dot printify, dot me. Hey, everybody, and welcome back to Frankie Files Podcast, Season 3. We made it back. After a triggering and very stressful season two, I did find out how triggering it is to interview survivors like me. (laughs) It can take weeks to recover. I had to change formats a little bit. It's super difficult. During season one and two, I was in a learning place where I just began discussing my trauma publicly. And of course, that's a lot. If you heard my story, you'll understand. In 2023, the cult retaliated hard. They didn't like that article that came out last April. I got slander, hacking, and more. Campaigns online, cyber stalking. Yet my burning questions remained. This is why I started all of this. How are religions, cults, and these types of groups enabled, sanctioned, and rewarded by the U.S. government? How did someone manipulate me? into ritual abuse and incest, and then subsequent slavery. Why did all my memories begin flooding back where there was amnesia from my trauma and CSA after age 30? Well, for the first time, I'm getting answers, and you will too. So many answers that after crying my way through her amazing documentary, I've decided to explore with you listeners all this survivor has to offer through 2024. I'm really excited about this. All of this missing time and lost memory where smelling salts were used to bring me conscious. Lots of strange things at the Crestline California Lodge. First, who is this woman? Her name is Kathy O'Brien. From her Amazon author bio, she is a 35-year U.S. government whistleblower on MKUltra mind control, trafficking, and that's for kids, and healing from it. Her website has the books that I want you to get and more at trance-formation.com. Transformation. The word trance, like in hypnosis, T-R-A-N-C-E-formation.com. I'm pretty excited about using this platform in this manner. So I'll be discussing this with you all as I read it and as you read it. It's turned into a book club. (laughs) I want you to read along, but start first with the documentary. Here's an excerpt from the documentary, okay? While I was still really young and all that was happening, I, I do remember losing my free thought. I couldn't even think anymore to hope that there was some place where people were kind. What she experienced as a sex slave rang bells for me. How'd they do it? Well, in her case, Being a poverty-stricken situation, her father, already abusing her sexually, was given a deal, uh, trading her for his freedom, and then she was traded to the CIA in a government program with many other children. Those of you listening who were enslaved by leaders in a church or cult understand this like I do. My guru even said, you are our experiment to me and my sister. And the menticide was in play. During the 50s, 60s, and 70s in the USA, much change was afoot following World War II. But one of my burning questions has always been, how is the government involved? Okay, the freedom of religion part, yeah. Lack of tax and lack of oversight, I get that. 
But this trafficking, a total lack of accountability? Nope, it doesn't make sense. It really looks like the government profits off pain and chaos. There's a faction who are deep into it, into the dark occult rituals and sex abuse, as well as drinking adrenal blood. That was new to me. The blood of people tortured and scared has a lot of adrenaline, and that's what they're addicted to. This inner circle that Kathy's going to expose to us. I don't know if my cult did that extreme, like blood ritual or anything like that. I never saw that. And it began in the 70s. They were steeped in this mind control concepts. I'll be damned. They were definitely targeting the youth, separating families, looking for young, impressionable people, using trauma-based mind control. I can definitely attest to that. And I found out they were dosing people with LSD. I never understood that, uh, didn't know that. As a child, they never used the words in front of me, and I was not aware if I was dosed, but I was definitely tampered with, with hypnosis and more. They got 14 years of my life total in one city box complex, which they still live in. They were raided by the attorney general at one point in the 70s, and bribery of a U.S. congressman was in play, and that's why. Then the place remained in business and is still there in its 51st year. While that'll be interesting, it's going to be left to the Morningland Papers future episodes. We'll explore techniques in this year's podcast, season three, that you may have run into in your cult or larger scale techniques if you were never in a cult used for mass control. She's going to talk about those too. So today I want to ask you to watch the documentary to start this whole journey. Through the year, you can comment on my substack at frankiefilespodcast.com. You can also look at it at frankietees.substack.com under the Frankie Files tab or on YouTube at Frankie Files Podcast. Comments which are rude to any survivor will be removed. It's highly moderated. The biggest propaganda ever accomplished to me, seems to be that there is no mind control. They've convinced us there's no mind control, but we know there is. We're about to explore that there is mind control and the techniques used in high control groups. Today, I thought I'd start with an excerpt from Trans-Formation of America, which introduces us to Mark Phillips. Mark is the CIA spook who literally rescued Kathy and her daughter from MK Ultra. She's the last surviving victim who is speaking out that I'm aware of. So note, March will be the documentary. We're going to cover that next episode. And we're going to start on the book Transformation. And we'll go from there. Since I want to give you a chance to see it, link in the show notes. Here is, to start us off, an excerpt from Transformation, the book. This is the first book published. It's in reprint. And we're going to follow the sequence as they were published. You could see the notes for what sequence we'll be following, okay? For the reading list. Here's the foreword of Transformation of America by Mark Phillips with Liberty and Justice for All. Preamble to the United States Constitution. My name is Mark Ewing Phillips, born May 17th, 43 in Nashville, Tennessee. I have no criminal record and I've never been adjudged insane. I'm not a scholar, professional writer, or mental health physician. While I lack the official published academic credentials, I am recognized internationally by mental health and law enforcement professionals as an authority on the secret science concerning external control of the mind. The purpose of part one of this book is to document how this reputation was gained. The brief and highly condensed contribution is intended to provide an understanding of why, when, and where I embarked on a study of the most secret technology known to man, trauma-based mind control. Through the publication of declassified United States government documents, our U.S. Department of Defense admits that this ancient wizard's mechanism for control is so dangerous, most information pertaining to it must be classified as top secret. You're listening to The Frankie Files. FrankieFilesPodcast.com As the employee of a Department of Defense subcontractor with exposure to mind control research, 
I was required to sign an oath of secrecy. To this day, I am restricted by law from revealing certain information that directly pertain to my employment as, among other sensitive ex- exposures, a U.S. Department of Defense subcontractor in mind control research. This super secret technology is an evolved system of remote human physical and psychological manipulation that has only recently been officially recognized by accredited mental health physicians for what it is, absolute mind control. My first encounter with mind control research began in the late 60s in Atlanta, Georgia, on the Emory University campus at the Yerkes Primate Center. It was there that I learned about primate behavior modification, the basis for mind control. Part one of this book is my attempt to import an understanding of how this and other exposures would prepare me for the challenge of a lifetime. What I witnessed in terms of technology at the Yerkes Primate Center and other government-sponsored research facilities combined with years of personal research into this science of mind manipulation did not adequately prepare me for what I would be exposed to in 1988 through an unexpected chain of events. This exposure came in the form of a personal acquaintance with the human results visually entitled by DOD as, among other cryptic file titles, MKUltra. I've outlined this noxious introduction in hopes that the material provided by one MKUltra survivor, Kathy O'Brien, will incite a legitimate federal investigation of her claims. I was able to liberate MKUltra victims Kathy O'Brien and her daughter Kelly from the invisible grip of the U.S. government's secret weapon of control. In this process, I helped Kathy recover her mental and physical health. However, I have not been successful in enlisting the cooperation of my government to pursue the justice issue. There's a reason for this failure to obtain justice that you, the reader, need to know. I've been told repeatedly, justice is not obtainable for reasons of national security. This book is primarily the autobiography of Kathy O'Brien, who did not volunteer for service to her country, but was used her entire life against her innate voluntary will for perpetuating criminal activity by many so-called leaders within the U.S. government. These treasonous leaders did volunteer for political service from our country. They must be held accountable for their actions. Together, Kathy and I, that's Mark, have dedicated our lives to the pursuit of justice and rehabilitation for her and Kelly. All avenues for justice and rehabilitative relief have been blocked for reasons of national security. The question arises, whose security? Kathy O'Brien provides the logical answer. Perhaps after reading this work, you will inspire others to read it. Collectively, as patriots, we can make a positive difference for Kathy and Kelly, our government, and humanity by having our voices heard. In my opinion, our great United States Constitution does not need to be amended. It needs to be enforced. The grim reality we must all embrace is that there is, in human terms, no justice and no revenge adequate to equal what these two and many other victims of the U.S. government's secret weapon experienced. The only remaining remnant of our opportunity for justice for these survivors would derive from a public forum expose of what they have experienced. What these survivors need to witness is the mass dissemination of their story and a radical positive change in their government's management of secrets. This would be an acceptable, though belated, substitute for justice. Their hope lies in the belief that truth lives a wretched life, but always survives a lie. Mind control by any other name. Just going to read a little bit more. Sometimes words or groups of words found in the English language have many definitions or meanings. Within each meaning, there may be different logical and literal perceptions 
of the application of a given word. However, the words mind control usually conjure up a single response. This is most unfortunate due to the vast differences of perception contained within the reference. For example, if you've access to a late 80s Random House or later Webster New Collegiate Dictionary and reference mind control, you will notice there's a conspicuous absence of a listing. Should you go one step further and secure a college professor's teaching copy of Oxford's Companion to the Mind, Oxford Press 1987, you can reference practically anything concerning research of the mind sans a reference to mind control. Perhaps you may not now realize that through Random House, Webster, and Oxford Press omissions, you are a victim of information control. These days, we live in a world in which the continued existence of multinational business and governments depend upon instant communications. However, with consideration to the so-called problem of information overload, it would appear to most people that we hear and see enough to make national decisions concerning our individual lives. Unfortunately, this is not true. What we don't know, as evidenced by mind control atrocities, is quickly destroying society as we have known it. The answer to this problem is glaringly apparent. We as citizens of a supposedly free country should not permit our government to restrict any information that protects criminal activity under the guise of national security. Secret knowledge equals power, and the end result being control. Therefore, despite the deliberate efforts of those persons in control of national media information management, who are not media employees, results of secret mind control projects gone awry have been leaking out for years through the media. People are literally waking up to the mind control reality because there's an obvious lack of logical explanation for certain sensational news events. Nice. What really happened at Jim Jones, Jonestown, and with Siren, Siren, John Hinckley, and Lee Harvey Oswald? And more importantly, why did it happen? The simple common denominator existing among these persons has been publicly stated by the media, based on research of their medical histories, to be mind control. In reality, information control is but one component of mind control, whereas brainwashing, a term coined by an investigative journalist writing about Korean War POWs around 1951, described the results of what the Chinese regarded as thought reform. This free show is brought to you by Frankie T's Art. Now you can get themed art on t-shirts. That's right. Check out Frankie Tees, T-E-E-S, on our Substack, Or just go to Frankie Tees, T-E-E-S, dot printify, dot me. The term brainwashing denotes to most people the destruction of a person's memory. This slang term continues to be used by the news media in place of the all-encompassing term mind control. In reality, applied brainwashing techniques are similar to those in trauma-based behavior modification. During the past three decades, a significant number of religious groups worldwide has been cited by the mainstream media news as destructive cults. An emphasis on the word destructive is necessary in defining these groups as cults. Random House Dictionary defines cult as a particular system of religious worship. By this definition, the word cult would encompass all religions. These so-called destructive cults have been publicly denounced by the news media for using brainwashing, thought reform, and mind manipulation tactics on their believers. However, there is an obvious lack of expressed concern by these same media as they fail to address the underlying issues of mind control, the power basis for abuse. Ooh, so much to say there. But I'm going to keep reading. Perhaps the reporting news media cannot, for some reason, publicly open the proverbial Pandora's box. Is it plausible then to consider that closer scrutiny by the media and the public of these destructive cults' leadership 
could reveal a solid connection to government-sponsored mind control research? These are questions that in themselves properly addressed would provide important answers to this social epidemic involving physical and psychological abuse. The answer that an in-depth professional investigation would provide could be the first step in resolving the rash of problems that destructive cults, serial killers, and sexual child abuse thrust upon society. As consumers of national news media supplied information, we continue to accept half-truths, which in this case scenario is seeing and hearing only what results from mass mind manipulation. Historians provide us a glimpse into the future through recorded events of the past. It appears that throughout recorded history, man has, towards the end of each millennium, returned to a focus on certain types of bizarre human behavior. For example, there's been in the past 150 years a resurgence of widespread interest in the occult black arts, which include Satanism or Luciferianism. These constitutionally protected religions use trauma to control the minds of their followers. Thank you, Mark. Mind control practices within the occult groups, according to survivors adjudged credible by law enforcement officials, have been accredited with bridging the gap between applied science and shamanism. Occultism as a manner of religious expression has been around for thousands of years. Only in the last 150 years has science aggressively pursued the truths regarding mind manipulation hidden within the occult belief system themselves. According to the Random House Dictionary, occultism is the practice of alleged science claiming knowledge of supernatural agencies, which are beyond the range of ordinary knowledge. Once again, a reminder that secret knowledge equals power. In 1971, the New York Times reported a story on the Central Intelligence Agency and occult research the basis of which was gained through a collection of documents released by the U.S. Government Printing Office under the Freedom of Information Act. This was a report to Congress and clearly showed that the CIA was interested in the cause and effect clinical findings that occult religious practices have on the black arts practitioners and or the observer's mind. Of particular interest to the CIA were the heightened levels of suggestibility that certain occult rituals produce in the minds of the practitioners. Cannibalism and blood rituals were ranked highest in the order of importance to their research. <laughs> Behavioral psychology teaches us that control of human suggestibility is recognized as the fundamental building block for external control of the mind. This suggestibility factor alone potentially creates a human rights legal issue when we consider constructing laws to protect people from overt or covert mind control practices. Consideration to the human suggestibility factor could result in all forms of consumer-oriented service and or product advertising becoming illegal. Advertising and the marketing of services and or products through communication can be justifiably defined as a type of psychological manipulation, thought reform, and or mind manipulation, which results in a form of behavior modification. A patriot friend, Steve Jacobson, published his book entitled Mind Control in America in 1985 eloquently exposing the science of mind manipulation through advertising. The basis for successfully modifying human behavior requires mind manipulation techniques that, when expertly applied through advertising media, become a form of soft mind control. Factoring in suggestibility that the tactile senses as the Achilles heel of the human race renders everyone vulnerable to becoming on some level a victim of soft mind control. The controversy of what is and what is not mind control rages on among scholars in the schools of law, human rights, and mental health. All the while, the confusion of issues provides a form of legal protection 
for practitioners of trauma-based mind control. The only known form of remote human control that is absolute. All other forms of mind control, including chemical and electronic manipulations, are considered by mind control experts as temporary. There are laws protecting U.S. citizen rights to protect their religious beliefs and freedom of speech. There are no laws which specifically protect leaders of destructive cults and or practitioners of trauma-based mind control. However, because of the U.S. government's use of mind control and the broad diversity of legal opinion concerning the accepted limits of free speech and religious practices, the legal loopholes for criminals employing mind control techniques on their flocks for personal gain remain open. For every problem, there exists a solution. The formula for problem solving rests firmly on the quality of supporting research information concerning the nature of the problem. Legislating laws specifically to protect people from mind control abuses would be futile. Practically every civilized society in existence has some law and or a group of laws which would protect the people and punish the practitioner of mind control. Laws are enforced according to lawmakers' interpretations of the specific legal language. The lack of enforcement of laws already on the books that could protect us from mind control abuses stems from applied legal interpretations and cover-ups of survivor testimony by the CIA and National Security Agency, NSA, for reasons of national security. Mind control atrocities. If committed by anyone who could be linked to government-sponsored projects, are typically ignored and covered up. Access to the courts by these hapless survivors is thus stonewalled by government-paid so-called legal experts who receive their orders from the National Security Agency. Defining the term mind control is akin to defining the limits of the 1947 National Security Act. The basis for the solution of the national security controversy is simple. It is known as truth logically applied. It's an obvious truth that the National Security Act has been interpreted not to guard the integrity of military secrets, but instead to protect criminal activity of the highest order. Repeal of this act and replacement with the established rules of military conduct concerning national security that do not infringe upon the constitutional rights of America's citizenry or the right of its allies would result in compliance with the Constitution. Goodness, so that was Mark Phillips. That's his foreword and chapter one of Transformation of America. So you see how he clearly draws the connection between cult behavior, the condoning of it by governments, and why they always get off because they might be learning something about mind control. I mean, Nexium's a great example. By the time he got arrested, he had done a lot of damage on a lot of people. And what did they do? They captured the data, the curriculum. Hmm. Thanks for listening to Frankie Files podcast. So excited to be back. Please check the show notes for reader schedule this year. And don't forget to keep critical thinking. This free show is brought to you by Frankie T's Art. Now you can get themed art on t-shirts. That's right. Check out Frankie T's, T-E-E-S, on our Substack, Or just go to Frankie T's, T-E-E-S, dot printify dot me. You're listening to The Frankie Files, frankiefilespodcast.com.